Hey guys, this is Darren, Benson, and Winston. We're here today to do our very, very first video of a Renegade Explorer. We came up late last night. Uh, the factory's closed today, so we needed to get this unit picked up this morning, had it brought across the street to a transport lot. Uh, this is not really for any kind of pickup whatsoever, but they just did me a favor and brought it over here so I could pick it up this morning. So we'll just go ahead and jump up to this Explorer. Like I said this is the very first unit we've received. Um, you know, there's been a few delays in regards to the paint department there. So I've seen this unit, but I've not seen it all cleaned up and ready to go. I was here last week and they were still kind of working on the paint going through it, but it is now ready to go. So it's a little windy today, uh, very fall-esque. So a little bit windy, a little bit chilly. So we'll jump inside, we'll get the heater going. It's only 50 something degrees outside, but we'll turn the heated tile floors on. You guys will be able to maybe see me a little bit more comfortable with uh, nice warm feet inside. So I'm gonna jump out and then we're just gonna kinda go through the coach real quick. <laughs> Winston gets a little excited whenever we get out of the car. So definitely a good looking unit. We'll get it pulled out uh, and walk around the coach, but just wanted to kind of share you guys, share with you guys is basically what we're seeing for the very first time. So mid-entry, both of the explorers, both the 40 foot and the 38 foot will be a mid-entry. And Renegade's kind of going to predominantly uh, mid-entry coaches, just trying to uh, kind of streamline their production. Uh, just affords them a little bit more room up front and back with a mid-entry. So we're just going to go ahead and jump inside real quick. Notable, the solid surface uh, entry well right here. They are, they are relatively tall steps compared to some of their other products in the past. Does have the Firefly. Lots of room inside the coach when you walk in. Uh, very easy to maneuver inside the coach while you guys are driving up and down the road. Not an issue here. We didn't option this with theater seats. This being a bath and a half, we thought, well, maybe somebody might want to be able to take kids or grandkids along the route. So this does flip out. This does make down as well. And to basically kind of make it a little more comfortable, we optioned it with some ottomans that would go out here. So you'd be able to put your feet up and be able to watch TV kind of hang out. We did not option it with the fireplace. I I, for one, have a difficult time doing the electric fireplaces. I think it's just kind of travel trailer-esque. Um, so not a problem to option one for custom order, but in general, I would rather have the storage. I just kind of think the electric fireplaces are more well-suited for travel trailers. But just my opinion, uh, just kind of, that's my, that's my thought. So uh, inside, you, probably the, you know, the most notable thing inside whenever you first walk in is the ceiling height. So roughly you lose about six inches of ceiling height compared to the classic. Now, once you jump over to say the, um, any of the Verona products of Valencia or even over to the XL, which is actually a little bit higher line product than this, uh, same, same ceiling height. So people that are used to that product really won't uh, be able to really notice any kind of difference. But from me being, you know, civilly, so heavily involved in the classics, definitely see a huge, huge difference in ceiling height right here. So. Um, that's one thing that kind of makes the coach feel a little bit smaller to me personally. Uh, a few other no, you know, notable things. So they've done a lot of great things in the way of upgraded trim compared to, say, you know, your classic. Um, but, you know, this is very, very in line with your uh, XL and with your Rhone LE as far as trim. On a personal level, I'm not a big fan of the uh, wallboard interior. That's what I like about the classic is we can do... Uh, all the soft touch, you know, the soft touch upper lower and then Wayne's coat. Um, inside the slide boxes really doesn't stand out too much. Probably the number one thing, and I'll flop around with you, is this radius corner right here. Um, you know, this just being a wallboard product. Uh, of course, you know, this is a, uh, from a price point, it's a substantially less than a classic or an XL and definitely an icon. But um, as far as, you know, I'm just not a big fan of this just kind of, Reminds me more of you know a lower line product, but however, you know you jump up to somebody like your higher line, uh, New Mars and Cornerstones, and they still have this product. But just uh, that's one thing I really really like about uh, some of the other products is the soft touch walls. But just just kind of you know personal level, uh, lots of light tones inside here. Um, they have expanded the 
<clears throat> extended some of the uh, fabric lines. Uh, the 38 we've got coming down the pipeline will have a little bit darker toned uh, couch. Uh, as time progressed, uh, you know, I was really uh, me being kind of a neat freak. It was very, uh, it was kind of very stark white. Um, but as times progressed, it's kind of more of a uh, creamy type white. Um, you know, as as far as cleanup. Uh, with it being more of a creamy white, I don't think it's going to be too tough to keep uh, clean versus a really, really stark white. But um, happy with all the colors, you know, the color combinations. We just did a standard sheen here, didn't do any kind of high sheen. Just on a personal level, I don't like the high sheen. Uh, you see a lot of what we call trash that gets in the in the clear coat. Uh, you see, you know, little pieces and parts in the clear coat, and then definitely any kind of fingerprint. If it was a, if it was a high gloss, you put your hand right there, you'll see that fingerprint so it gets wiped off. But uh, pretty happy about it. Uh, really happy about the chassis. You know, I've really enjoyed having the Cascadia for the past few years. I don't think that there's a better chassis out there on the market. Uh, it's a very easily serviced product. Most Freightliner dealers know of these units uh, and they welcome them. Going over to like the Peterbilts and the Volvos, there's still a lot of dealers out there. They just don't simply don't know what to do with an RV customer versus most of the Freightliner customers are servicing, you know, the Class A diesel product. So they really, you know, they're happy to see a truck and they know what to do with the RV customer whenever they come in. So definitely cool setup there. Um, we will get it pulled up and we'll kind of walk around the coach and then we'll open it up as well. Apologize for a little bit of the uh, clearing the throat and whatnot. I'll grab some water whenever we come back and do the rest of the tour. But Happy you guys are checking this out with me and, and uh, want to give you guys a really, uh, you know, basically a, just my, kind of my opinion and my views and, and what to look at and what to consider with this product. But I think it's going to be a well-received product. Uh, you know, I think in time we'll probably see, you know, a bunk over. We'll probably see, a you know, some kind of bunk bed uh, line in here. But uh, it's going to be a good price point, a uh, little, little bit lower than your classics and your XLs. Uh, but as far as drivability, much, much, you know, a tr dramatic difference over the uh, the Freightliner M2. The, that Cascadia just is leaps and bounds different. So uh, bear with us and we'll get everything kind of rolling out. Okay, here we are outside the coach. Most notable to me are the elevated front and rear caps. You know, they basically kind of did that as a higher end uh, attribute. You see a lot of that on your higher end Class A's. Of course, they do that on the on the icon as well. So the elevated cap basically matches your uh, your awning line there. Just kind of gives a little bit more bold look. Kind of check out up front. I know it's kind of windy, so I'm trying to step back around, but there's a little air gap right there that goes underneath that top spoiler. So a very bold looking coach, very unique looking unit. Um, a very high end exterior uh, setup as far as the front and rear caps themselves. This is the uh, Freightliner Cascadia 116, so it's a little bit shorter hood. It pushes the engine and the fuel tank back rearwards just a little bit. As far as the power plant itself, it's a DD13, which is 12.8 liters, 505 horsepower, and 1850 torque. Now, oddly enough, the 600 horse is the same torque, 1850 torque. Difference being, you know, I kind of feel like this engine's a little bit more dialed in, oddly. Uh, you know, I, I'm a bigger fan of more horsepower, but the, the fact that this motor is basically used in 80% of the over-the-road Freightliner Cascadia's out there on the highway kind of tells you that they have put the most amount of, re of research and development in this engine to get the most amount of power out of it, get the most fuel efficiency out of it. Traditionally, the DD13, I would say, would probably gain about, you know, half a mile a gallon to a mile and a half gallon over the 600 horse, just because uh, it's just it's not working, it's not working so hard in in different uh, in different uh, power bands, but. Um, from my past experience, it's pretty pretty amazing what this little guy right here will do compared to the 600 horse. So, don't feel like moving down to this 505 horsepower is really going to, you know, rob you any kind of real power. Uh, you know, the probably the biggest the biggest benefit to the 600 horse should be if you're pulling lots of weight, which just only has a 20,000 pound uh, weight rating on it. So, really don't think it's an issue. Now, all the Explorers will be equipped with the Allison 4000 series transmission. You know, there again, not my favorite transmission. I'd rather have the DT transmission. 
but trying to kind of push this product to more RV use, they become accustomed to using the uh, the Allison transmission. The DT transmission is a little bit jerkier, so it's it's basically a, a transmission that's designed for the trucking industry as a whole. Versus the Allison is more of you know vocational or uh, you know RV use. So just kind of preference there. It does have all the Detroit Assurance system. So basically, crash mitigation, adaptive cruise, blind spot monitoring. They call this uh, on guard, I believe. Uh, so basically all the technology there, uh, and this coach will run out, I mean this coach will want to run 75, 80 miles an hour, not a problem. Uh, the tires themselves, keep in mind I say that, uh, the tires are rated at 75 miles an hour, so don't drive faster than 75 miles an hour. Uh, up front we do have, they should be running all the 18,000 pound front axles. They are 315, so they will be 18,000, just like they do on most of the other product line. And then they'll actually run a 23,000 pound rear axle, but federal law, federal law says you need to stay under that 20,000 pound mark. So that's the reason why they've done certain things inside to kind of you know alleviate some of that weight. So as I said earlier, it is a 40 foot, bath and a half. They only have two floor plans right now. We have a 38 that we're hoping to do Basically like a week-long travel back to Texas that units the only thing that's unsold this entire rest of the year But hopefully it will remain unsold and we'll be able to do a look like a lengthy video about playing with it for about a week or two So mid-entry everything will be mid-entry in fact in 23 You'll see a lot of mid-entry floor plans in the classic line. They were traditionally front entry in the past uh, Just trying to kind of make things more modular in the in the classic line um, and just more RVS doing a mid-entry coach but uh, just kind of preference there you do lose a little bit of space once you do a mid-entry up front uh, you can't get that entry do the entry door all the way forward so that basically trying to kind of minimize or maximize space by doing a mid-entry one thing that's pretty unique about the Explorer line is very very similar to say your icon and your uh, and your XL the floor height is a little bit taller so if you look at the height of these bag two apartments right here, they're much greater than what you would have on the Classic or the Veronas. Of course, you can see this belt line, it will drop down over those baggage doors right there because of the slide mechanism that goes in that slide. So not quite as deep or tall, should I say, on these, but still a fair amount of room for a shorter coach. And oddly enough, you know, people say, well, tandem versus a single, you know, you're talking roughly four foot for an additional axle. So, you know, going up to a 45 foot coach in a tandem axle, you don't gain that much storage compartment. But you see the ottoman right here, and it's basically will open up, you can put some storage inside there. And then all the bag two compartments, uh, this is an option on the Explorer doing the uh, spray liner on there. Makes it handy to be able to rinse them out, wipe them out, not have any carpet inside there. All of these are auto locking, so you have a key fob or a keypad right here to be able to get in those guys. Three quarter pass through right back here. And then there is, so oddly enough, I don't know why they would prep. This is your prep for an outdoor cooler. Don't know why you'd stick an outdoor cooler here in this compartment to uh, lock that three quarter pass through. It makes much more sense to go up there, but small little things to kind of get through as time progresses. Bigger rear bay than what we normally have right back here. Central vac up on the top, all your tools there. They do ship it loose with the glad hands there. A few extra tiles should you, we've not had, knock on wood, we've not had any issues with tiles breaking inside the coach, just people breaking them, you know, dropping things inside the coach itself. Jump around back, two piece rear cap here. The nice thing about the rear cap, I'm gonna grab some water just as I, so I don't hack into the microphone. Uh, Two-piece rear cap, the idea being, you know, if you damage the lower portion, you can easily put that in a box and ship it anywhere in the country versus trying to replace the entire rear cap itself. As you can see here, basically with the elevated rear cap, they have a little airfoil right there uh, just to kind of keep from blocking all that wind uh, or including any kind of, you know, rain that would might, you know, if you were in a heavy rainfall, be able to get some of that water off the rear and then on the on the edges of this underneath the awnings as well this is an updated rear cap um, 
you know, Renegade does a pretty good job at uh, changing those caps every few years to kind of give it like, you know, a new, fresh look, right? Um, it's not quite as gaudy as the Icon cap. You know, the Icon cap has a gazillion lights and a lot of stainless. To me, this is just a nice, clean rear cap that doesn't, uh, doesn't scream too much attention. So 20,000 pound hitch here. Like I said, the glad hands right here. 3,000 pound tongue weight right there. I don't recommend pulling anything over 20,000 pounds. If you're gonna overload it, you definitely don't wanna do any additional uh, pin weight over, the, un, over that 3,000 pounds. It's just gonna put a lot of stress on the back of this coach. So good size compartment right here. That's your smart transfer switch and then your automatic cord reel. And there's a 110 outlet inside there as well. 8K gen, which is standard. And there's no option from there. Uh, just due to your weight limitations on the rear axle, they won't option a 10 or a 12.5 right back here. Heated wet bay, so they do have a hydronic register. You can, you can actually read the temperature inside the wet bay itself and be able to set the temperature. And then you do have some 12 volt heat pads in the bottom of all your gray water and black water. So 75 gray, 75 black. They do use the true tank sensors that gives you a full zero to 100% reading in 5% increments. This does have a Oddly enough, so that on the classic line, they have this guy that goes right inside there. Um, but not, not as clean, but I mean, it would be relatively easy to add that piece right there. And then you do have your uh, garden hose right there. We did not option it with the macerator pump. We generally do that back at the dealership. So gray and black right there. Inverter bay right here. And then there is a 30 amp solar controller right there. It's a 3000 watt inverter. Magnum hybrid. And then as far as batteries, we didn't option anything uh, special on batteries. This is just uh, just regular 8D AGM batteries. Um, you know, kind of preference on the uh, on the lithium upgrade, it's about $8,000 upgrade, $8,500 upgrade for the batteries. We get lots of varying opinions. We get a lot of people back home in Texas, they just say, you know what, if I need power, I'm just gonna start my generator. But everybody has their own preference. It's not a problem to change those out after the fact. So the fuel tank protrudes back here a little bit. If it was a, a 600 horse, everything kind of scoots forward. And so instead of your fuel tank coming all the way to right back here, you do have a jack back in there. It would get pushed forward a little bit and so you don't lose as much of your storage compartment. So single 120 gallon fuel tank on this side, 13 gallon depth, and then all your emissions will be located underneath the truck on the other side. Really accessible cab. The Cascadia cab is relatively tall as well compared to like your Volvo and your Peterbilt as well. Not a big fan of the spot mirrors, but if a person wanted to add the little spot mirrors on the hood here, there's there's bracketry back behind there to be able to take and just add those to the coach. But uh, you know, as far as you know, exterior look, I don't really think there's a better better looking unit out there on the market. You know, you know, Newmar's come to they've come to the market in about two years with their you know truck chassis Super C. Um, you know, they're still on the M2, and and there again, if anybody drives a two you'll pick the Cascadia hands down. Even, even with the, uh, the DD13 that they're doing in their, uh, in their higher line, there's just night day difference. At the end of the day, it's still just a vocational cab that's designed for regional use. We kind of talked about you know, the solid surface entry well right here, uh, which is typically what you see on the Icon and then the XLs. So we're going to start the generator and then we're going to start the heated tile floors as well. So we go to our electric menu, go to front, front floor. It'll take a second for that transfer switch to switch over. But that'll get going. We're going to go ahead and turn the aqua hot on too. Make our feetsies nice and warm. but. Yeah, there again, just a lot of room here. 
entry into the cab as far as your driver and passenger a ton of room these seats do turn around if so, so if you want to kind of bring more of the cab back in to your conversion not a problem you do have these little curtains that go around here a lot of people will go through and do you know additional uh, you know window coverings inside here you know, there's things that you can add as far as uh, you know bug screens windscreens and whatnot all the way across so there's a lot of different things as far as aftermarket goes there I'm going to cruise back in here to the mid bath and you can see a fair amount of room here so still a pretty usable bath I'm going to plop in there real quick. So very usable bath. You know, the, there again, a lot of the other products that have a half bath, they get so incredibly tiny. You can't get inside them. You can't do anything. You can't wash your hands. You feel, you know, very, very claustrophobic inside. But a fair amount of room here. Be able to get to all your storage everywhere as well. So 74 inch long mattress here, um, there again, you know, I can lay down on this mattress, but just uh, if you're exceptionally tall, you might look at buy, uh, building a classic, but uh, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue for most people. We'll go ahead and roll the slides out and we'll come back. And we have tons of space here. So both slide outs are out. So you have a lot of room right here. Um, this is not technically a full depth slide versus this is a little bit more full depth. Uh, because of the plumbing involved in this slide but lots of room here to be able to move around um, you know nice setup right here we talked about the little storage ottoman that's down below to be able to kind of sit here and be able to put your feet up this does fold out as well they did these nice little compartments right here be able to put uh, you know maybe your tv remotes there's not any kind of a charging device in here but if you brought it to us back home we could easily take and put some charging devices in each one of those guys right there Maybe that's something we can get further on down the line, some charging. You do have a plug right here with USBs, and then there is not a plug over here at all. So this person gets the charge, this person doesn't, but still nice overhead storage right here. Uh, there again, you know, this is very much a set product. So you couldn't order this coach with a cabinet delete, whereas a lot of the classics will do a cabinet delete, will do large picture windows in certain areas. But you know, still a really, really nice setup. Like I said, that is convertible as well, and that little cushion right there goes into place. Got some storage underneath here, and then you do have two seat belts there. I don't believe there are any seat belts located within this couch. I think that's just the only two seat belts right there. We'll confirm that once I get that thing folded out later on. But uh, you know, nice setup right here. Lots of storage back in here. So for somebody that's living full time, be able to put lots of pots and pans back in those cabinets. And then the TV itself does fold out. And so this is very similar to like the Verona LE floor plan where you have some storage back behind here as well. So you'll have full storage all the way back behind the TV. It does have a sound bar below this TV as well. And that'll fold that flap into place 18 cubic foot residential Samsung pretty much everything we've seen here in the uh, past few months have been the units without the handles don't know if the other ones have come back around or not but good storage here subwoofer underneath there lots of full length cabinets there and they're all dovetail and all soft close drawer glides as well the more storage back behind there and then we'll take a look at the pantry here. So the classics are individual drawers, whereas this is a one piece guy right here. So be careful about loading this guy up too heavy, but with it being smaller, I don't think it's too much of an issue. So I have a few different hydronic registers. You like the one there and one there. Uh, so, you know, it'll heat the coach nice and warm. We've actually got the generator going right now, which you can hardly hear at all be able to turn the heated tile floors on just as we walk in here with some bare feet uh, but very nice open floor plan uh, and then it, as far as you know compared to some of the other floor plans that have 
like a long cabinet right here that kind of blocks this entry. It makes it nice to be able to see your entry, be able to see out your entry door. Of course, you do have a little window shade right there. There again, they did a good job at trying to put storage basically anywhere. This nice coat closet there. Something you don't generally see in most units. And they've really done a good a good job on this part, trying to utilize space. Um, as great as the, the quality of Renegade, you know, they kind of fall short sometimes in the way of creative ideas on the inside of the coaches. And so I'm definitely happy with this particular floor plan right here. There again, bringing all the electrical right there. It's kind of a dead space anyhow. So rather than taking up some of your kitchen, it makes 10 times more sense to put it right there in what I would call dead space. So cruise back here. Do have a pocket door to be able to isolate both of these. The master itself. This is a 66 inch wide bed, but there again, a fair amount of room there. It's a little 32 inch TV there. And then some extra door space here and there. I'm gonna flip up the bed itself. So two 75 gallon fresh water tanks right there. You do have two hydronic registers on each side. We'll take and put some water in it for the customers coming in later on, but very accessible, very easy to get to. Um, you know, nice setup right there as far as servicing anything. Or, uh, and then come time to winterize the unit, you have a little valve right there, and all you have to do is take and suck some RV antifreeze in. You can winterize this coach, any consumer can winterize this coach in 15, 20 minutes tops. Flip that valve around so when we do put water in, it'll be ready for the customer. Ceiling fan in the back right here. So basically all, you, all of your um, Firefly locations will be able to utilize, be, you'll be able to turn all your lights on inside and out, be able to run your heat, your air conditioning, uh, and there is an app to be able to utilize that as well. And then there's a pad right here, makes it really handy. So master lights, so you've got a bed, left a light or two on, master lights on and off, be able to control your fan and your generator as well. So come back here to the master bath. Decent sized room right here. They did a pretty good job at utilizing as much space as possible. The first time I saw this, this was uh, definitely needed a little bit of adjustment because you had to hold some of this back and forth. Uh, unfortunately, this door only goes this way. I wish I wish they had a uh, dryer to be able to flip-flop this all the way around so you could take and basically do it from the other side. But the way that this is set up, it's just basically just one side. So take a little bit extra work to be able to do that. And it's just kind of the way everything falls. I don't know if they could ever reverse this complete. I don't think there's enough depth to be able to reverse this entire bathroom to be able to do it a little bit different. But we'll kind of work through as time progresses. In there again, still be able to sit here. And if you need to take a little nap, uh, put your head on the cabinet, wouldn't be a problem. So, but you know, decent amount of room. You're not, in, you know, no portion of your body is touching anything whenever you're on the toilet itself. There again, good storage here. Nice drawers as well. And then, nice little linen closet right here. So this is basically a hanging closet. And this guy right here, the, the shelves could be, well, in fact, all the shelves are, are adjustable. You could take and pull those shelves out if you needed to and be able to utilize it as a short hanging closet as well. I'll jump into the shower itself, solid surface shower, which is, this is an option. I couldn't imagine having a coach like this with a fiberglass shower. There again, you know, decent room. I can get in here and not be feel really confined. Definitely a little bit smaller shower than, than some of the other products that I sell, but as far as comparing to the RV industry, there's a lot of room inside this. This guy right here, nice setup in that will go up and down. Uh, you'll be able to turn your water on and off without having to utilize your faucet there to conserve water if you guys are boondocking or something. It's a standard to have that small uh, skylight right there. Glad it's really small and not really large. And there's a max air fan here. There's one up front and the other bath as well. They do not option any kind of max air fan to go in the kitchen area. You have to go up to, you know, let's say your classic for that. But you know, overall, as far as the colors, you know, definitely happy with. 
I was really concerned about the super light interior the first time I've seen it, but I guess just as time progressed, I'm kind of gotten accustomed to it. There again, you know, the floor, um, definitely light as well. Uh, you know, some of the grouts that they use are pretty light. When we get the coaches back home, we generally like to steam clean all of the grout and then seal them as well. Uh, this customer, this will be a short-term coach for him. He's building a new unit, but he'll be able to kind of utilize this coach, figure out what he likes and what he doesn't like, and then be able to incorporate those new ideas and do a new coach for himself. He'll buy a customized coach from here. But I'm um, glad you guys were able to kind of come out with us. Uh, we might look at doing a kind of a drive-along video. Uh, very much it's going to be very similar to the other Cascadias. It's not going to be too much different, but we'll see if we have some time to be able to do a drive-along video just to kind of put the whole package together uh, for you guys. And then definitely if we get that 38 in the next week or so, we'll be able to do a long, you know, kind of a pretty documented video about that. Uh, but pretty happy to have the product. Um, you know, all the colors came in uh, relatively, you know, it's... As time progressed, you know, I, I definitely uh, definitely like the color combinations a lot more than whenever I first saw them. But uh, nice setup, and you know, just just due to the uh, having the upgraded chassis, I think that this will draw a lot of people over to this product. And uh, you know, we've seen one of these units come up for sale that's been it was a used unit, um, and it was much higher than what we'd be asking for this coach. So I think it's going to retain its value really, really well. Uh, and people that are looking for a little bit smaller coach but don't want to you know spend all the steps building a classic uh, that does get pretty daunting going through all the colors and the floor plans and uh, this is pretty much you know set up for somebody that wants to come look at something be able to touch it and feel it not have to worry too much about uh, picking all the colors so uh, we'll have some more of these as time progresses we won't have other than that 38 we won't have any more till after the first year but definitely not a problem if, you, if anyone wants to order one in the meantime uh, we're looking out roughly about uh, to the June of next year, and then they'll jump into the 23s. I think we have a few explorers. I think all the classics are pretty much taken uh, between now and that time. But um, you know, always appreciate you guys checking out us online, going through the videos with us, liking, tagging, and sharing. It definitely helps us out quite a bit. Glad to be back up here in northern Indiana, get away from all the cotton ginning and harvesting, uh, get some of the cleared up allergies, but. I uh, appreciate you guys are coming out on the Saturday.